One of the most mystifying questions that has endured for years in the PC building community is how much RAM speed and timings actually matter. And seeing as many of you are making the transition from DDR4 to DDR5, we figured it'd be a good time for an updated video that can help answer this question. Currently, faster RAM tends to show benefits when you're using application where the CPU isn't the component bottlenecking you. In other words, if it's something where the CPU's cores are working really hard, it doesn't matter as much how fast data is moving from the RAM to the CPU as the CPU is already too busy working on all that data. This means that in general terms, tasks like video and image editing, AI, and file compression won't be affected too much by RAM speeds on modern systems, although exceptions for specific applications do exist. However, RAM speeds can make a difference for gamers depending on what exactly you're playing. To be clear, the GPU is still far and away the biggest hardware factor affecting gaming performance. And it's also true that having a sufficient amount of RAM is more important than having faster RAM, but all things being equal. How fast is fast enough when it comes to DDR5 gaming? A good rule of thumb is that DDR5 6000 tends to be a good sweet spot between those cheap 4800 speed kits and those pricey modules rated at 8000 or even higher. And if you're curious about what those numbers even mean, this is a module's rated speed in mega transfers per second. Multiplying that number by eight gives you the number of megabytes of data transferred per second. But why 6000? Well, we'll tell you where we got that number from right after we thank iFixit for sponsoring this video. Say goodbye to those unreliable dollar store tools. From now until May 31st, you can save 20% on all of iFixit's toolkits. Their comprehensive ProTech toolkit has everything from a variety of tweezers, a Mako driver kit with 64 bits, and their funny sounding but very useful budger tool or check out the Repair Business Toolkit, their repair shop in a bag. So head on over to the link in the description, check out iFix's toolkits and save 20% until May 31st. AMD has actually come out and straight up said that DDR5 6000 is a sweet spot for their Ryzen 7000 and 8000 series processors. Intel though has not made a similar statement, but 6000 is about right for their processors as well. For both manufacturers, getting too far above 6000 mega transfers can make it difficult for a memory controller to keep up with all that incoming data. For AMD specifically, their current lineup of Ryzen CPUs uses a linkage called Infinity Fabric that connects the various chiplets within the processor. AMD has recommended leaving the Infinity Fabric speed on auto to get the best performance for whatever you have your RAM speed set to, but turning your RAM speed up too high can cause the clock on the Infinity Fabric to automatically drop, which can offset the performance gains from the faster RAM. And also keep in mind that chips with 3D vCache also do not benefit as much from higher DDR5 speeds as that extra cache memory helps make up for RAM that's slower than otherwise might be ideal. That being said, that doesn't mean you can't try to use RAM above 6,000 mega transfers, but at that point, you're getting into the realm of possible instability or diminishing returns depending on exactly how much you're paying for your RAM, especially if you start pushing into the 7,000 range. Keep in mind too, that 6,000 is already past the officially supported max speeds for current gen CPUs from both companies. And as it is with overclocking other computer parts, some of your luck will come down to the silicon lottery. This basically means that some chips come off the assembly line with more overclocking potential than others. Some folks have had good luck with speeds above 7,000, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you will. And of course, not all games will benefit from faster RAM. As a very general rule, it tends to matter more when you have games that run at lower resolutions and higher frame rates. Think eSport titles where users want as many frames as they can get at the possible expense of visual quality. But what about latency? You know, memory timings. Lower numbers are obviously better if you can afford them, but it isn't likely that you'll see a big benefit from spending a lot more money just to get the lowest timings possible. So unless you have some kind of very specific need for the faster memory, we definitely recommend getting the higher capacity if you're on a budget, especially if you're planning to run other applications while you're gaming. Maybe you're streaming, maybe you're keeping an eye on a video, or maybe you're just some kind of demon who can play at FPS while sitting through a remote job interview. I mean, how are they gonna know? 
Thanks for watching, guys. If you like this video, hit like, hit subscribe, and check out our other video on how DDR5 differs from DDR4. Comment with video suggestions, and don't forget to um, call your mother. <laughs>